Yo, what is up guys? Hope you're all doing great. Today we have an absolutely nuts 139 kills in under 30 minutes in the A6M50. Honestly feels like the old days with gameplays like this and there were some insane feeds in this game, as you'll see in the gameplay in the background. It literally just felt like every strafe I was getting like 3 kills minimum. The gameplay you're seeing for the first minute had to be taken from my stream over at twitch.tv slash silk2g. You can check the days which I stream by heading over to my page and looking at the countdown which tells you exactly how long it will be until I'm back. It's always really fun over there and I'd love to chat with all of you on the streams. Anyways, that's about it. This game plays actually 5kpm in 2021 which is pretty nuts for the planes and I'll actually get to commentating on exactly how I hit these 5kpm type games because while they don't come often there's definitely a bit of a formula to it and I'll try to explain that in this video. So sorry for the long intro but without further ado, here is the 5 kpm gameplay and I will get to commentating right now. Okay, so here we are. We're going to start off by free looking while flying. This is a technique that you use using the decoupled pilot free look setting along with a few binds. I've actually got a video on it. You guys can check it out if you want. I'm not going to go too far into it. Basically, why I do that though is because you can get fleeted from any range, right? At that range when I'm going in to prepare my strafe, I could get fleeted. I could get AA. You don't want to get caught out, so I like looking at the farm at all times. That way I can spot exactly what's going on. You don't want to have your eyes on the kills whenever you can. And at this range, I am not really being too careful. And honestly, I probably should be a little bit more careful here. But the reason why is that I like to do a bit of limit testing early on in games. I'll basically just farm pretty hard and I'll feel out kind of how much pressure the enemy wants to put on me. And then as they put more and more pressure on me, I'll kind of dial back my aggression. But that really, really helps me get really high kills per minute. I, I basically go as hard as I can. I don't leave the enemy any slack. And as soon as they start countering me more, that I'm, I'm more than capable of dialing that right back. Anyways, you can see the AA there. He's killing our planes a bit, so I decided to hit him with all my rockets and I actually get two kills, which is really nice. But on this map, you, you do want to be making sure that AA always dies because an AA plus a fleet is an easy kill. You know, an AA on its own could actually kill you. It's just, it's just not a good idea leaving it alive. But as you can see, like, the Fliegers get out to that far range. It's good just to have an eye on the farm. And I'm just, you know, going for easy kills. Basically, at this range, you don't really need to go for guys that are running. You want to try to find the snipers. The guys are going to stand still. Because usually, they're the ones that aren't going to move. And your rockets will be more efficient with. With really, really good efficiency. And you'll sometimes have games where you can do this. You can shoot three rockets per kill. And that's a bit of a tip. But in, in actuality, you're more realistically going to be shooting about four rockets per kill so you can get basically two kills minimum per strafe if you're accurate that is however obviously the rockets are pretty good splash damage and sometimes let's say you see a big group of six you might spray your rockets in a line around the group of six people and get them all you know like that that is kind of what you have to end up doing and i'll point it out if i see it but right now i'm just doing four rockets per player and just trying to catch groups so if i see two snipers put a rocket in the middle of the snipers if i see guys running then you know, I'll try not to waste my rocket from the running people. Anyways, just going back for another resupply. Sometimes I will just use my auto repair and I'll stray from further distance. But at this point, I want to have enough health that I can actually get in there. Because there are a lot of kills and there are a lot of assaults as well. So send four rockets towards an assault. Send another four towards the guy next to him. Honestly, the reason why I went for those two guys, probably could have got more kills there. But whenever people are really close to each other, like where I don't have to spend much time target switching it is definitely worth just going for them because target switching in the plane isn't instant. You have to really, you know, move the mouse a lot. And that's an example of the line technique. If you run it back, you'll actually see that I don't try to aim specifically at different soldiers. I will just, you know, draw a line basically across the enemies and it kills them all. Anyways, coming back in here, just going to be looking towards the farm again. And I know they're going to be raising the smoke. I see the line of smoke exactly where I shot before, so going to repeat it, draw another line through the smoke, and I'm going to get five more. Here we come back in, looking towards the regular spots. Near that mound, there's always people. I think I see three people there, but one of them died, or one of them wasn't actually there. And I just realized with two rockets left, I'm not killing anything. May as well put it into the tank and get some damage started there. And as you can see, you guys, we're already 83 or 82 in low right now. Actually farming this game, it was an incredible match. Anyways, with that damage on the tank, I can always go for that as a backup, but... Realistically, I'm looking for guys who are in the open, and the guy running has to be my second target there. It was just the closest one towards the one I shot before. Back to what I was saying before, you know, running targets aren't good, but at least he was close, so he was easy to aim at. And 
and often if you have to go for a running target, I would like to say that the, the technique is to shoot the sniper with your first, you know, barrage of rockets, your first four, because those are going to hit. Those are definitely going to hit the sniper because he's not going to move. Your second barrage, you'll be closer to the action, and that's when you want to go for the running man if you have to. Anyways, I see the AA is up. I'm not sure if I'll go for him, but it would be a smart idea to actually kill him right now. But, you know, the enemy are actually pushing on A flag, so I don't actually have to get that close to get a lot of kills. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Never mind, I'm um, looking at the AA here, and these rockets have a little bit of drop. You have to aim it just a bit above it like I did there, and they'll, you know, perfectly smash the AA and always kill the guy. I don't even use 8 rockets on the AA usually. If there's 2 guys there, I'll use 8, but if not, you know, 4 is enough. And as you can see, A has been capped, so I have to turn my eyes towards A, and I see, you know, some guys in the trenches here. And unfortunately, I just aim my rockets really badly, and only get 2 kills. But 2 kills is still, you know, an above average strafe, I'd say. Or, more or less what you want to be going for. Every strafe is 2 kills, that's what I'm going to try to get. Anyways, AA is back up. Gonna have to really focus on that. I noticed that this game, I'm pretty much the only guy who's really consistently dealing with the AA. That's alright though, I don't get mad at that, I just, you know, accept that as my responsibility and I try to help people out, so we go for the AA again. Anyways, I don't think I killed him that well last time, so I shouldn't really get him down, but this tank here, he's looking too juicy, and I knew that was going to be a one pass kill, because I saw some damage going to him before, I knew I'd get him in one pass there, so that's always worth doing. Honestly though, if you're a real big farmer and you want to just get as many kills as you can, you need to let them get past the sector and therefore you should probably let the tank survive. But I was just kind of killing everything and I was just going no mercy on these players and just killing absolutely everyone and all the tanks. Anyways, we continue flying here, get back to the resupply as usual and we're going to be looking towards that A choke point, the, the hill that they usually stack up on has always got a lot of kills on it, but only after we kill the AA. Again, slightly aim above it. You can tell basically where the rockets are going to go by the first few. Like, if your plane is drifting to one direction, you'll probably have to lead them in the other direction if you want to be perfect for the aims, but honestly, I don't worry about horizontal with the zeros. I just worry about vertical drop, and there is not much to deal with. Anyways, looking back towards that A hill, really common choke point, and... I kind of messed the rockets up, but they still get enough kills because they have really, really good splash damage. And this gameplay is a lot of the same stuff, really. Like, I'm going for the enemies that are the closest to me, and I'm trying to shoot basically as soon as I can. And I'll explain that in the next straight, because there is a technique for it. But as you can see, got a lot of kills, and, you know, the, the regular cycle is to supercharge right back to the repair. And if you look down the bottom right, more or less, when it's about three quarters done on my rockets, I'll start to turn back. Like right then, three quarters done. And then by the time you're pointing at the action, your rockets are ready to go. You're at a good distance, and you just gotta shoot. And at that point, the kills are just, you know, waiting for you, fish in a barrel. Easy as hell. So, again, you watch the, the bottom right again. It's a very automatic process for me. About three quarters in, start to turn. And I don't even think about this when I'm playing. It's just a habit I got myself into by thinking about it, obviously, at the start. And then now, it just comes to me naturally. Anyways, with these enemies I'm picking off right now, I'm just going for the ones that are the closest to me, but not only for that reason, but also because that position right there is actually a position that I have died to Fliegerfaust users from. They'll get really, really close to your runway, and they'll just catch you off guard while you're repairing, or they'll even catch a plane taking off. So I want to make sure that both me and my friendlies, we're all safe from Fliegerfaust users, and I don't want anyone spawn camping at runway or just killing someone on an easy repair because the most likely place to find a wounded plane is the enemy spawn, or in my case, my spawn, so I just don't want to let them have that position. So I'm really, really pounding on them right now, just getting rid of them all from this little position on the side of the hill. It's going to take some time, but as long as I show them that I'm absolutely aware of what they're doing, they're going to be under a lot more pressure than just, you know, running towards my spawn, especially because there's no friendlies there to protect me, and getting an easy flieger off. Anyways, I noticed there's a tank there, but I thought I saw a guy really, really close to my spawn, and that's why I flicked to it straight away. As soon as I see people like close to my spawn, I always, you know, try to get them out of the game instantly. But I didn't see someone there, so I had to settle for one kill. Anyways, that is a good reflex to have, and I don't regret getting one kill there because that reflex is one that definitely saved my life. Anyways, I thought the AA shooting a lot, but there's no one on it anymore. 
And I'm going to go for the tank anyway, because he's so close that he won't be able to repair in the amount of time that I'll get some more rockets, and I'll have them aimed right back at him. So as you'll notice here, as I'm flying back, I'm using my free look again, just to look at the tank, seeing what kind of damage hits him, and in my head, I think it's going to take four rockets. So I fire those rockets at the tank, expecting him to die, but unfortunately, I misunderstood it. Anyways, the tank did end up dying, so that is the job done. I did my job there, but I didn't get the kill credit for myself, which is what it's all about in the end. Forget the team, it's all about your own kills. Of course, I'm joking there. Please don't get mad at me in the comments, I don't really need it. Anyways, speaking about teamwork, <laughs> actually in this plane, I have never lost a round on Iwo Jima defense. It just has never happened. Not in the A6M20 either. And the reason why isn't the plane, but is the way I do tend to play when things get serious. And that is pretty much going for impact kills over just massive kill feeds. Sure, I will still get pretty big kill feeds a lot of the time, but when the game gets serious and I think we're in risk of losing, I know which kills to go for. And those are the kills that are closest to objectives or in positions of power. Now the closest to objectives thing is really easy to understand, basically whoever's closest to the flag, but the positions of power thing is more just something you learn as being a decent infantry player or having a lot of experience on the map. So I basically know that, you know, when I'm playing infantry on Iwo Jima offense, which I do quite a lot, I know exactly what position you want to be in to get a lot of kills, and I can recognize that from the plane on the other side now, and I know if I, if I see someone there, I've been there before, and I know that I can get a lot of kills from there, and I don't want the enemy to do the same thing. So I'm going to go for that enemy every single time, and make sure that he doesn't get anything done from that good position. And that is basically why I win so many matches on this on this plane and on this map, aside from it being very strong. Obviously, you know, the Zero is very strong in this map, but I do see a lot of pilots. They don't win as many games, I don't think, and obviously there would be some that would have probably the same win rate as me on this map, but... It is something to take note of. There, there are little things that you can kind of add to a thought process that may sacrifice some of your killing potential. But look, my KDM is fine. I don't really care about my KDM. It's fine enough. I'm just trying to win games at that point, and that really does work for me. Anyways, a plane does overextend to my side of the map. I'm always going to go and try to kill them for doing that. It just teaches them good habits, teaches them to not mess with the boys, and we get rid of them pretty easy. Honestly, I'm flying a little bit too close there, but I do kill the assault player, so I can get a bit closer. Of course, the AA was hitting me though, so, you know, I wouldn't get that close again, and ideally, you're kind of killing people from right where I am right now. You know, as soon as you can see people, you should be shooting the rockets if you're good enough to do that, and that's going to maximize your KPM, because the more time you're spending shooting, and the less time you're spending flying around looking for kills, that's obviously going to get you higher up on the scoreboard, and you'll have way more impact. Obviously, KPM isn't everything, but you'll hear me mention it a lot in my videos. As a pilot, it does actually matter a lot more than every other statistic, I think. Obviously, score per minute can be manipulated by shooting down a lot of planes or dropping flares. Um, you know, KD can be manipulated by basically playing way too safe. KPM is just how much you're fragging, like how many people you're killing every single minute. And kills are pretty much all you can really offer in the plane. The only other one that I think is, you know, a pretty important stat is vehicles destroyed. If you're a vehicle destroying pilot and you get like 20, 30 vehicles destroyed a game, you're doing very well for yourself. Anyways, what just happened there was that I forgot to shoot all my rockets out before I resupplied. So it basically put one in the in the clip and I had to reload the other seven. Anyways, because I messed that up, I don't actually get a kill. I would have killed that sniper if I had more rockets. And now I'm dogfighting instead. So, I mean, that's all right. I'll get the dogfight out the way. But unfortunately, I think this guy is going to run away. I tried to hit him with some rockets on his exit, but he just doesn't give me anything. So unfortunately, that's how a lot of dogfights go in the Pacific. You'll get a lot of damage on them, but if you're smart enough, you'll know not to chase. I mean, I could have chased him and got that, that kill, sure. It'd be easy, very easy kill. But I lose my plane. I lose my massive kill streak, which is not really what matters. But basically, the enemy will have you know 90 seconds of not having someone hammer them in the plane. In 90 seconds, a lot can happen in Battlefield, like, these games don't go for that long. And especially 90 seconds with only one sector left, I'm not going to risk that. I'm just going to keep the foot on the pedal and make sure that these guys don't cap the sector. Of course, if I wanted way more kills and less KPM, I could just let them cap it and, you know, kind of just fly a little bit less aggressively. But these days, honestly, I just get games over with. Uh, I just go as hard as I can. I don't really, you know, let people push or anything. So, here... Oh, this plane comes in with way too much energy. I uh, see he's literally supercharging in towards me. 
and he's going to overshoot if I hit the brakes. So I hit the brakes and I do a bit of a scissor maneuver with a lot of rudders to just burn as much energy as I can and make myself really hard to hit. And he overshoots massively. I put my afterburner back on, or oh sorry, supercharger, and I'm on a six. So that was really, really easy. He just came in with too much energy and he didn't really do anything with the cannons from the ranges and he could have definitely hit me to a lot less health. Like, his problem there, pretty much as soon as he got that close with that much speed, I was always going to end up on his 6, and I think I would have killed him no matter what. What he did wrong though was he should just be using the cannons from a further range, even using the rocket pods up closer, and he could have just killed me in a single pass there. Instead, he kind of messed it up, and he didn't really kill me at all. Anyways, we see a tank that's pushing up, but unfortunately he's going to expose himself to a lot of angles at once, and I don't really think he's going to survive there for long, so I'm going to go for some infantry instead. I'm gonna go for the guys in the resupply box, because usually those are the Fliegerfaust users. So I just like getting rid of them. Not even just to, you know, make myself safer, but just to show them that even though they're gonna use a Fliegerfaust, I'll still dominate them. So I go kill all those guys, and I'm just gonna be looking back towards them. I think they're gonna get rezzed, and of course they do get rezzed. Unfortunately, my rockets just aren't very well aimed, and I don't really get as much out of that strafe as I would have hoped. Anyways, it's always just another strafe away from getting some more kills, so we're gonna resupply. Look back towards the combat, and this time not going to be using the free look camera, but just the rear view. Again, looking towards those trenches there. Usually near, near the resupply box, there's always going to be some Flieger users. And I used five rockets instead of four on the first guy. Bit of a mistake, as that's what caused me to not get the second kill. So I should have just, you know, kept my discipline, four rockets per enemy. But I thought I missed a little bit, so I ended up using a bit too much. Anyways, flying back towards the combat area, I do see a plane coming in way too close, and you know my rule, if they fly over to my side of the map, I'm going to dogfight them and try to get them out of the sky. I just find that fun trying to track planes out the sky and just seeing how fast I can kill them, especially with pub pilots who aren't very good at flying, you can just absolutely beam them. Anyways, I get a little bit too close there, not punished for it however, and I see a tank that is really really pushing up that B side. So I'm going to hammer him with my rockets, see how many I can hit there. And I hit him pretty decently, I get the repairer on him, and I think my friendly tank should finish him off. But anyways, I will go back, get some more ammo, and I'll see if I have to do them with a lot of strafe. While I'm coming back though, I do spot some infantry on that regular A hill. And, I mean, they're not really impactful kills here. And I'm kind of hoping that they do push through, but I'm not going to let them, you know, like, have any free time. So, I will keep killing people, but I won't kill super impactful players, because... That's what's going to win us the game instantly. And I did kind of want at this time to see how the game would pan out. Like, if they cap this sector, how many kills would I have got? I guess we'll never know because I'm pretty sure we're going to hold them here. Anyways, I do see a tank in this spawn on the back hill. And at this point, I'm kind of feeling like I want to go for some tanks. So, I'm going to look towards him. He's resupplying. Running towards the resupply, sorry. And that usually means that he's going to be wounded. Anyways, I get fliggered a little bit there, and sometimes the most unpredictable flying could be just stopping scissoring entirely and just fly straight for a little bit. Sometimes that is really unpredictable because people are really used to, you know, when you're flying away from combat, you know, barrel rolling everywhere, switching all over the place. Sometimes, you know, just keeping it simple can actually keep you a bit safer. And as you see here, a plane is going to be flying at me. I kind of give him my 6 there, honestly. He could have got on my 6 easily, but he didn't, and... He's going to be harmless again, so I just switch back to the rockets, look back towards some kills. I see a tank here, he's getting hit. I'm going to see if I can kill him. And unfortunately I don't get him in the one pass, but I do think I want to get him on the second one. Especially with only 11 tickets left, it's sometimes fun just to kill some tanks here and there. So I'm just going to look straight back towards him. I mean, this is going to be pretty much my last strafe of the game. As you can see, the tickets are now ticking down, and we're about to finish the game by killing a tank here, and locking in the 139 no gameplay. Anyways, that's going to be it. That's my best game since coming back to Battlefield 5, and I hope you'll enjoy it. If you want to catch more gameplays like this, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if you want to see them live, go over to my Twitch at Silk2G. Anyways, that will be it. Like if you liked it, dislike if you dislike the gameplay, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.